Today's episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. HelloFresh is going to get you that good food delivered right to your home. Let's jump into this podcast. Hello, everybody. It's time for Cox and Friend Dogs. Friend Dogs in the morning. In the morning. Live, 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 live. Before our recording studio audience. Recording. Wake your ass up, it's the next in the morning. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the episode of Cax and Crendor in the morning. Hey, it's a new year. It is. It is a new year. Somehow we made it to another one. <laughs> How does it keep happening? I know it just keeps happening. You figured one of these years they'd stop. Like you know what? We've <laughs> numbers high enough. We're good. But no, we're, uh, we've done it. We're here. You know, first podcast of 2024. How's your 2024 been? Ah, uh, you know, same as 2023. <laughs> <laughs> that I wish I could awesome. say it was. Yeah, I wish I could say it was great. It. I mean, today I did see the new Godzilla movie. And that was pretty cool. So like. I heard it was good. It's good. It's actually really good. But yeah, I saw that, and uh, that was that's pretty much it. We went to the diner that is close to the theater that I haven't been to since the time my mom and I went 10 years ago, and they stole my credit card. So <laughs> I purposefully <laughs> brought cash, and I was like, just to be safe. Um, yeah. And it was fine. It was, you know, it was a diner, and we figured we'd go get breakfast and then go see the movie at, at 1 p.m. in the afternoon on a Sunday because we were like to hell with it why not and then uh yeah that was that's really the most exciting thing I've done <laughs> since the start of the year I'll be honest in the last seven days I've done nothing of value at all oh <laughs> well sometimes that's how you got to start the year off right I mean sure you start it out with just uh nothing and then you build into something all great things yeah. start from nothing I mean, you you are correct. You are correct. But I haven't done like any resolutions. I haven't even attempted to make myself better. I <laughs> am just kind of cruising, cruising through to the beginning of this year. I was like, you know what? I'm over it. I just don't care. I I did nothing of value for New Year's Eve. I did nothing of value for New Year's Day. <laughs> I did nothing of value since. And I'll be honest, I'm fine with it. Yeah. You know what? Just because everybody else is doing something, being like, I'm going to better myself. <laughs> but here's the thing. Most of them give up pretty quickly, right? You don't got to worry about sure, that. Sure, sure. Because you've already given up. I haven't even started. That's the key. <laughs> That's, That's true. That's the key that people don't understand that. I haven't even started this. Yeah. When do you think you will start? Uh, it depends on what I'm starting, I guess, right? Like, what, what, am, I, what am I attempting to do? I don't know. That's what are you question. attempting That's to do? That's the question you have to ask yourself. <laughs> what exactly am I attempting to do here? Yeah. It's uh, it's like how everybody always goes to the gym at the start of the year. And sure. I notice because the gym gets a little more crowded. I go to a more uh, expensive gym. So it's not like, you know, Planet Fitness where it's like, come on in for one dollar. And then it's like literally packed in there. Uh. But I know because there's been people that are like, dude, the gym's insane. I don't even go because I can't get in the door. And I'm just like, uh, I go to my like old person gym. Uh, but, like, you know, it's it's like anything. You have to make what you're doing a part of your life. So it's like it's easy to be like, I'm going to do this thing. But in, you have to like actually make a plan to like implement it into your life and change your life. And that's why it's so hard. Yeah. And I think a lot of it is not exciting. People, yeah. especially if they're on like a weight loss journey or they're on like a better health journey or a quit smoking journey or whatever the hell, it's not necessarily the most exciting thing because all you're doing is committing to making a change that it requires maintenance and uh, like checking in with yourself and like doing the same thing every day, like that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. that's boring. And I yeah. get why people are kind of like, nah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I am. Um, I, I just, my start to this year was like, what if instead of making something crazy and trying to do something crazy, I just chill out, chill the hell out. Maybe that's my, maybe that's my resolution <laughs> is, you know what? I'm going to do even less than I did last year. Who knows? Honestly, that's probably a good thing, especially for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just not do anything this year. I mean, I don't have any big travel plans this year. 
Uh, I think I have to do one thing because it's game related in mm-hmm. March. But like, I got no conventions lined up. I got no nothing. I'm just like, maybe this year I don't do anything. So I'm, you know, that sounds good to me. Yeah, I agree. I already do that. But what I'm trying to do <laughs> is I'm trying to like clean up. I usually at the start of the new year, I always like st- I start cleaning everything. It's like I start spring cleaning in January, primarily because the ad rates are terrible. Uh, like all the all the brand deals, the money, everything just happens. So it's like January sure. is like the worst month. Even February is a bit better. Like it starts picking up. But like January is just like it just the holidays end. Everyone's like, I just spent a bunch of money on the holidays. Everyone's like, oh, they're working on themselves. They got their resolutions, like all this stuff. And I'm just like, and I'm just going to like clean and like plan stuff out. So that's kind of what I've been doing. See, that's the, moving or, or transitioning from the advertising world. Because that's, I mean, to be honest, when we do our streams, or our YouTube videos, it's all about advertising. That's how we make our money. And companies are trying to advertise in November, in December, to sell you stuff for Christmas, for the holidays, right? Yeah. But, you know, you're right. That in January, that dries up. What's interesting is that on the game dev side of things, December, from December 1 on, no one wanted to, like, everyone's like, all right, let's just meet up in January. No one wanted to do anything. <laughs> no one wanted to work. All my projects were on hold. And then January 3rd, everyone's like, all right, let's go. And I'm like, oh, my God, okay. <laughs> so at least I have that to do. But uh, it's pretty wild because it's like the flip side where I imagine that's for most people in most industries where it's like, yeah, so December was kind of a mess. Everyone took off to go spend time with kids or family or whatever. But we're back now. It's January. It's uh, it feels strange considering I've spent years (laughs) in a world where December is when you worked your hardest. Yeah. No, it's uh. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, that's true, because most people are it's like their winter break, essentially, even like people in school. You're like, all right, we got like two weeks off, just chill out or whatever. And then you come back refreshed and you're like, all right, let's go. I mean, most parents and stuff, when they get time off, they get the time off at the end where they have to like babysit their kids or watch their kids because they're at home for those two weeks, two or three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, I mean, you know what? I think no matter how you choose to (laughs) spend your new year, you know, as long as you're, as long as you're fitting your own style of life, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I feel like some people feel bad because they're like, oh, I didn't do a resolution. Like, who cares? Right? You don't have to do a resolution in January. You can do a resolution in, like, March. You don't even have to call it a resolution. are just uh, ways to convince yourself to do with, like, it's New Year. I'm gonna be, but, like, you can re- be resolute in anything, at any time. Crendor's right. Like, yeah. You can make a change in your life at any time. It doesn't have to be January 1st. It's just convenient because it feels like a starting point. Yeah. But what? who cares if it's January 25th? Or February 3rd. It, like, who cares? Yeah. Like, I became Jim Dore in August. <laughs> it was literally, I remember, because <laughs> Battle for Azeroth came out, and we were all playing it that day, and I had my first ever, like, gym training session. And that was like, dude, I love this. And then that was it. And that was in August. It wasn't like a new year or anything. Like, it could just, it could happen any time. And if anything, it's better, because then you could just... You know, do what you're doing. There's less pressure. There's nobody being like, what's your resolution or whatever. You're just like, no, I'm just doing this. Plus, you were ready to change. I think that's huge. That's also true. (laughs) You have to be ready to make it. Everyone's like, you got to change. You got to change. You know, you got to make yourself better. But a lot of the time, you're not emotionally, physically, spiritually, whatever, ready to make a change. And so you'll do it for a week or two, but it's not something you want. It's something you feel like you have to do. And so you just don't stick with it. And I think... You know, once once people decide they're ready, then that's a thing, right? They're yeah. like, okay, I'm willing to commit. And, uh, yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be 2024 either. This could be the year you do nothing, and then next year yeah. you're going to do great. Like, who who cares, man? Yeah. <laughs> it's your life. Yeah. Enjoy. Exactly. And uh, You're right. You got to be willing and, like, ready to commit to it. Because, I mean, listen, people are always like, how did you start going to the gym? I was like, I didn't want to die. <laughs> my blood pressure was getting higher. I was my my stomach pains, all that stuff, and I was like, dude, I got my gallbladder out. That was my toenail thing. I was like, dude, I gotta, I gotta change. You did have a rough, you did have a rough few ones there, dude. It was a, <laughs> the age twenty eight was probably my worst year. That was the that was the Crendor arc of like pre gallbladder, post gallbladder, like that hit, and then boom, everything changed. It like it was like a wake up call. I was like, I gotta do something. So, 
the moral of the story is uh huh I got nothing. <laughs> the moral of the story is I got nothing. That put it on put it on a book. <laughs> yeah. I got nothing, the Crendor story. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good book, honestly. I got nothing. Uh, I am selling sweatpants for another three days. That's true, though. That's pretty good. Yeah. I, I can't sell anything. I don't have a shop anymore. Oh, yeah, that's right. The, yeah. the, we were selling those blankets, and then they just stopped because they went yeah, bankrupt. Uh, <laughs> that was awkward. For those of you who aren't aware, towards the end of the year there, we had a merch site up, or at least I did, and it was through this company that I was you know looking for – you know, to do merch for tours and to do merch for various things. And they were associated with the tour group that we use. Uh, if you've ever seen a Cox and Crandall live show. Mm. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. This is great. And they were based in Chicago. So, like, getting merch delivered to us in Ch- like is perfect. Yeah. I was like, this is wonderful. Yeah. And so what ended up happening is for a few years there, it was lovely. It was fine. Uh, but then over the last year, it's been kind of like quality's declined. Communication's gotten bad. Yeah. And instead of paying me every month, it started to be every three months. And I was like, something's yeah. not right here. But we had that great idea for the blankets, and those blankets sold out so quickly. Thank you to everyone who got those. Um, and what ended up happening is I expected payment. I expected something because those blankets we paid to have made. It isn't like a thing where some magic blanket <laughs> yeah. man made them. Those blankets <laughs> cost a lot of money to get made. Uh, you can tell if you have one because the quality is great. Yeah, and, except um, for the like seven that did get made by the magical blanket man. Well, I mean, like, yeah, but that's that's before we captured him and put him in a basement. <laughs> yeah. And he was clearly. like, "You must pay me if you wish me to make more blankets." <laughs> I was like, fine, oh my god. And he's like, I tis true. Blankets I shall make for you. He's and, kind uh, of a dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we're like, all right. And so, uh, I guess at the end of their maybe a week before Christmas, I don't even know. They just shut the doors, didn't tell anyone except the employees that they were uh, filing for bankruptcy, fired everyone, and then sent us an email that literally was just like, yeah, the business is closed. If you need to pick up anything, you can get it at our warehouse. Here's where to get it. And uh, if you didn't get paid, tough. We're filing for bankruptcy. Contact a lawyer. And I was like, <laughs> what the? Now, mind you, we had... Uh, three months of unpaid stuff, and it was during the blanket sales, and those blankets sold out. So that there was a pretty penny that uh, Crendor and I could have been rolling in like Scrooge McDuck, but yep. spoilers, <laughs> and there isn't anymore. Would have been and great. So yeah, and so they um, I had to contact a lawyer, and the lawyer's like, I'll look into it, and I'm pretty sure I'm just out a bunch of money. <laughs> so and it's not even you know. Like, oh, man, it's money that I didn't make. It's money that we spent to have blankets made and then didn't recoup. So if you have a blanket, know that those are extra special because basically I bought you a blanket is what it goes down to. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> so just remember. I'm a, so I'm trying to find a new seller. I think I have one, and hopefully we'll have those blankets back up and we'll have some more stuff, but... Yeah, I was like, cool, cool. So that's, I mean, you can understand why I came to 2024 just like, I don't even care anymore, man. Who <laughs> yeah. doesn't even matter? Yeah, that is pretty uh, It's pretty frustrating. But, yeah. you know, that's... It sucks. It's life, you know? You it just, is. I mean, so you win some, you lose some. I'm thankful that I'm not in a place where, like, that's going to make or break me. But right. also, it's like, oh, we spend so much money and it's... <sighs> okay, goodbye money. You know, yeah. I'm I'm glad everyone got something. I'm yeah. mad that you gave it to a company that then stole it. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I know much. they're saying we went bankrupt, we don't have any money, but also what happened to the money then? Yeah, where's like, the, where'd money? the money? Go? It's gotta be somewhere. It then just yeah, it like, doesn't like vanish. disappear. <laughs> and yeah, and so we were just like, you can't pay us and like you gotta contact a lawyer if you wanna get the money. I was like, cool. <laughs> yeah, they're just so that's hoping, a whole process. Uh, the entire process is like too much hassle to go through. I mean, uh, it is, I mean, it is. Yeah, I know for a fact <laughs> that uh, getting a lawyer. The last time we needed a lawyer for a project, they wanted a five thousand dollar retainer just to even agree to be a part of it. <laughs> yep, and that's Sounds not including right. the hourly fee to work. And I was like, "Are you kidding me?" So 
Yeah, the whole idea is they're assuming that I'm not going to want to fight to get the money because it will most likely cost me more in lawyer fees to get that money than it will to just take the hit. Yeah. Yeah, that's it always so ends scummy. up being I hate I hate that stuff, man. Yeah. That that's ends, that ends up being a lot of things where the company will be like, "Hey, you want your thing? Sue us." Cuz they know they can just like drag it out and, and you just waste all yep. your money and you have to give up. So it's <laughs> Yeah, and and if they file for bankruptcy, they're just going to be like, "We don't have any like, okay, you won. We still don't have money." You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like <laughs> awesome, so cool. Business, baby. Yeah. 2024. 2024. <laughs> Although, like you know a what? Wrecking ball. That started in 2023, to be to be fair. That, that was the end of 2020. Yeah, you know what? 2024, so far, seven days in, feeling fine. Yeah. Life is, it's better. It's, <laughs> you know what? It's better than the last week of 2023. So we're good. Yeah. We, uh, for New Year's, we just stayed home and we made a charcuterie board. Ooh, what you have on it? Uh, we got some olives, got some of those, those meats. Got some a uh, couple cheeses, and like brie right, cheese. I need, I, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, brie olives, cheese. Check. Not like I get it. <laughs> yeah, we got the olives. I like olives. What kind olives of meats? Are olives they're, are great. They're do like, they have pits or no pits? They have pits. So I did like, you heat them up? Did you do like a hot olive thing? No, you just like they're like already good. They just got the pit in them, so you just eat them, and then you'd spit the yeah, pit all right. out. There's just some restaurants you go to where they they like warm the olives. Oh yeah, in oil, uh, and then you like eat, and it's fine. You know, it's like it's whatever. I yeah. don't know I don't why really we're buying the... olives at a restaurant, but like whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not a big fan of the heated olives. Like it's okay. I'd rather just eat the room temp olives. Uh, I feel that. Yeah. So then we had a uh, it was like prosciutto and a couple other udos. I don't know what they uh -huh. are. <laughs> oh no, or pastrami, or you know, not pastrami, but like you know, the fancy amis. Yeah, a couple yeah, udos like and a uh, couple hot dog meat, and <laughs> yeah, bologna, hot dogs, uh, <laughs> can of beans, um, you <laughs> know, charcuterie. Fries. Yeah, 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 charcuterie. Uh, and then, yeah, I like brie cheese. Brie cheese is great. We also had like a goat cheese. I like goat cheese. I actually I love a good, good tangy cheese. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, not like a whole lot, but I, I like it. Uh, and then we get our like fancy champagne. We get it once a year. This is like the one time a year we get our like. Are you super guys a dry champagne. champagne or does Toast want a sweeter champagne? Oh, we like dry. We don't really like sweet wine. Even she doesn't like sweet wine. This one's That's a right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I remember when we went out and got wines, and I was the one who was like. They, we had that flight of wines, and the two of you drank like the driest, tanniest <laughs> wines ever. And I drank yep. like wines for 40 year old housewives. <laughs> and they're like, this is our sweetest dessert wine <laughs> composed of like 80% sugar. And you're just like, oh man, give me like a like, bottle of that. Yeah, one. that sounds great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and we get a, uh, it's called, it's an actual champagne. It's a brut rose called Billicart Samon. Ooh. I think that's how you say it. Oh, I got to look this up. Billicart Samon. Yeah, B-I-L-L-E-C-A-R-T. And then salmon, but they say salmon because I heard it on a YouTube thing. I see that. Whoa, yeah. this is a big time wine. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like sixty to eighty dollar range. This depending, is a big but... time wine. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so that's why it's a it's, it's a once a year wine. This isn't like I a... get it. It's New Year's, yeah. you know. That's yeah, sweet. New Year's, and it's fantastic. I love this wine. It's so good. Uh, and so. Yeah, we did that. We watched uh, we watched all the shitty New Year's things just because it's fun to like watch it. And you know, they got like what? Who does New Year's around. now? Is it still uh, Anderson Cooper? Uh, no, it is. It was literally just like random new people. I have no idea who they are. Uh, they oh no, wait, they had to make uh, them do Fortnite dances. <laughs> they had Megan the Stallion. Oh well, she was uh, okay. She was dancing hard. You know what? Uh, she always dances hard, though. That's why I like her. She does. Honestly, she she, they're, they're like some pretty good bots. It was way better than Ninja Fortnite dancing. Like, I, I was well, at least Yeah, because it's it. Ninja Fortnite dancing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh, so we, we, like, turned that on and then swapped to... They also had Nashville New Year on, which Oof. is, like, prime watching. Just, like, people <laughs> in cowboy hats, like, yeah, they're, like, head bop. They're just, like, I went down town. Looking for my car and I couldn't see, and they're just like, "Woo!" I uh, 
I don't, I don't like, I don't want to judge anyone, but, <laughs> All right. but you're how mom, big was the hair in the audience? Mm. Like, are we talking, when you say Nashville New Year's, are we talking like, hey y'all, I made some butter cake. I don't, know, I don't know why that's the most southern thing I can think of. But uh, like, is it that, or like, you know, no. like big mom gene energy, or is it like cool? It was very much more like cool millennial gotcha. Nashville people. <laughs> if they I were mean, just Nashville's like pretty cool, like no joke, it's pretty cool. I just didn't yeah. know if that was you know we call it Nashville because yeah. it's from the South. You know what I mean? Yeah, apparently Nashville's getting a lot of people from the north going there being like, this is a nice little southern town, and they're like cityifying it. It's uh, a, it's like a big music place. Yeah. So so a lot of people I know who are trying to get into music go there, but mm. they aren't doing country, so I don't know what the vibe, like, maybe it's a rock town too, I don't know. I think they're doing a little bit of everything now, but... It was if you took the cowboy hats off people and got rid of the country music, you would think it was New York, to be honest. After that, we watched uh what's it called? The When Harry Met Sally. Alright, that's a cute movie. That's a solid that's a solid romantic comedy. Yeah, and we watched that on New Year's because it ends on New Year's, so it's like a New Year's ah, movie. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a good movie. It's a, just like one a of those fun people that Watched Lord of the Rings so that at New Year's, as it the the clock struck midnight, the Rohirrim showed up. They're like, they're like, yeah, let's go twenty twenty four. Those are my favorite people because you know they had to time that perfectly. They're like, everyone needs to be in their seat so we can get through two and a half movies so we can watch the end of this at midnight. They're not that dedicated, uh, uh, but <laughs> no, it's uh, no, no, it was fun. It's a good time. Uh, it's, you know, it's a nice, chill New Year. You don't got to go anywhere. There's no crazy parties. Just chill out. Have a good time. I like that. That's yeah. chill. Uh, I did remember something since you brought up charcuterie. I don't know why right. this triggered the memory. But uh, Friday, I don't, don't even ask me how I found this out. I was, I think, just like scrolling Reddit. And some dude was like, yo, there's this pizza place that just opened up in L.A., you got to check it out. And I was like, all right. I love the boys and I love a good slice. So I scrolled through this web page and I realized it is a pizza place that is outdoors in the parking lot of a church only open between 2 and 7 p.m. on Friday. And I was like, this is the most L.A. thing I've ever heard of. We have to go. <laughs> all the reviews were like, this place is so good. It's like, Okay. So, uh, Alex Davis and I rolled in at 2 p.m. on Friday, <laughs> and we ordered, they had a, like, a normal New York-style cheese pizza that we got. They only had, like, six pizzas on the menu. And we got a cheese pizza, but then we got a, like, Detroit-style sausage and uh, jalapeno pepper, like, spicy pepper one. Mm. Dude, while you're waiting, this, I don't know what they're money-making operation is, but these people have it made. So you order your pizza, and all the drinks are free. They have a cooler out there next to the trucks. You pop it open, they've got energy drinks and water and, and like, Gatorade and sodas and stuff, and it's just free. If you order a pizza, you're just getting a drink. Dang. Because. Then, That's pretty great. While we're si yeah, while we're sitting there waiting, this dude comes around with little cups, and he's like, Hey, here you go. Uh, while you wait, we made some pasta fajoul that you can have. And we're like, what? <laughs> so we're sitting there eating a little cup of pasta. And I was like, this is amazing. Then they get us our pizzas. Oh, oh, before that, Davis rolls up. He didn't get any pasta because he was rolling in late. But mm. then the guy comes up to him. He's like, hey, we got an extra slice of this, uh, you know, white pizza we made. Do you want this? And Alex and I were like, no, nah, we just ate the fajoul. And this guy's like, hey, you want this? And Davis is like, sure, I'll take it. So the man got a free piece of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> then our order's ready, and we get our, our two pizzas, and we go to sit down. And while we're sitting there tasting this pizza and trying it out, kid comes over, big tray of cannoli. He's like, hey, complimentary <laughs> cannoli. I'm like, what is your business model? <laughs> the craziest thing I've ever seen. I don't know if they're associated with the church, so they're like getting some sort of tax write-off or something. I don't know what's going on. But this place 
slapped. I was so excited. We sat there. The pizza was great. It was like uh, the New York style was thin, but just a little crispy, so it wasn't like slumping. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't like oily and gross. The Detroit style that it had like the crust around the edge and it, like the sausage was so good. It was great. I couldn't believe it. And it made me upset because this is just outside in a parking lot with like three <laughs> benches and a bunch <laughs> of people just making pizza out of the back of a truck, dude. It was not like the, the stove was in the back of like a, a pickup truck. That is actually And they were just making insane. pizzas. And this place had the, some of the best pizza I've had in this city. That is, honestly, it's like you said, sometimes just the little shack places that have the best things. It was crazy. I was so impressed. I was like, yo, this might be the Friday spot. This is incredible. It's straight up maybe six blocks from our office. So that I was is, like, this is the spot. This is amazing. Yeah, it's going to be like a, a weekly place now. <laughs> it might be. It was It was cheap. And they, I got so much free stuff. You give me free things, I'm a customer for life. <laughs> like, that's just, like, I'm in. I will be back. <laughs> I sat yeah. there, and they were just like, here you go, have some pasta. And I was like, what the hell? And then they were like, oh, yeah, here you go. The drinks are free. So I should have gotten, I got, all I got was water, but I should have been like, I'm taking this Gatorade, too. I don't, you know what? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Becoming your dad is taking the jelly packets. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. And then we were done. I was like, you know, if you guys want to take this pizza home, go nuts. It was, it was, everyone there was chill. There was a lady who was like confusing Detroit style for Chicago style pizza. And she was <laughs> like, honey, honey, look, they have Chicago. And the husband was like, it's not Chicago, dear. She was like, I don't know. It looks pretty thick to me. <laughs> we were just like, mm. <laughs> there was this old couple next to us who were eating their uh, thin crust pizza with only jalapenos on it. And I was like, that's a couple I like. And they kept asking us, like, well, what's that pizza? We're like, Do you want to try some of this? It was like that vibe where everyone's just sitting around like, you want to try some of this pizza? There were two gym bros who rolled up and each one of them got two whole pizzas. Oh, my God. And the guy who's making the pizzas kept delivering it to him. He's like, you sure you boys can eat this? And the dude seemed like an old Italian man, which made it even better. He's like, you boys think you can eat this? And they're like, yeah, we can, we can stuff that down, Pops. Don't worry. I was like, I love it here. <laughs> this place does sound phenomenal. Yeah. It was, it was a, a show. Everything about it was a show. There were, people had their, all their dogs walking around. There was a, a bunch of dudes who looked like they were probably in their early 20s who were clearly high and, like, giggling like hell over the pizzas. Uh, yeah, and I'm here for that. I love that kind of stuff. That was a great experience. Yeah, that does sound phenomenal. I would I would 100% go there. There's nothing like a, a weird random-ass pizza place that also gives you free food. Yeah. I don't know what it would be like in the middle of summer when it's 102 degrees outside, but <laughs> yeah. January, lovely. Great time. Solid 60 degrees in L.A. Good time. I was going to say, what did you do for New Year's? I don't think you said. Uh, for New Year's, I hung out with friends on New Year's Eve for a little bit. And on New Year's Day, I hung out with friends. But New, Year like, New Year's, like, I was in bed by 10, dude. I didn't do anything. <laughs> that sounds about right. So you didn't even see anything. You didn't see the ball drop. You didn't see whatever. You were just you were asleep. I mean, where I'm in the city in L.A., because it's L.A., they just bombard you with fireworks. So I knew when it was midnight at 9 p.m., when it was East Coast midnight, and I knew when it was midnight every hour after that because people were just setting off fireworks. Uh, and, yeah. um, you know, I already – from my window, I could see – I think it was somewhere in the city they were setting off fireworks. I'm not sure. It's some park. So I could see that, and that was around 9, and I was like, okay. Cool. <laughs> and then I, <laughs> and then I uh, went to bed. I was like, you know what? I'm fine. I got I got stuff to do in the morning. Basically, I could stay up till midnight, or I could wake up early and then go get breakfast with friends and not be tired. So I was like, uh, you know what? I'm all right. I'm not going to. Yeah, I did nothing of value for New Year's Eve. I went out to like 6.30, <laughs> got, you know, hung out a little bit, and then was like, all right, I'm going to go home. <laughs> Uh, I did, there was one tweet you said I wanted to bring up. Okay. And it was the one that made me think you were in Culver's. 
You said you were stuck oh, in traffic yeah, yeah. and somebody popped the wheelie or something. So yesterday I was coming back from my morning gym stuff that I do every Saturday morning. And I was um, driving through Culver City. Culver City is like, uh, you've been there. It's kind of in between where Alex and I live. It is the place where Sony has all their studios. Oh, yeah, it's, I remember that. It's very nice. It's a it's a nice part of town. A lot of great restaurants in downtown Culver. But so during COVID, I guess they took it upon themselves to instead of having three lanes, to cut it down to one lane for cars, one lane for buses, and one lane for bikes. And so now there's barricades and all these different things. I guess so it can be more walkable as a downtown, which I think is smart. Yeah. I you know, driving through it's a pain in the ass, but seeing more people walk around down there is very nice. I like that kind of stuff. So in the bike lane, as I'm driving through, there was this kid, I'm gonna say maybe 11, 12, 13, uh, goofy looking helmet, almost all denim clothes on, very <laughs> cute, riding his bike, and I'm watching him try to like lift up off the ground while I'm sitting there in traffic. And he finally lifts off. And does a wheelie, I'm going to say for a good 10 seconds down the street. And when he lands, he, like, I can see him audibly shout, like, yeah! <laughs> and then he clutches his chest in a realization of, oh, my God, I can't believe I did that. And I don't know if he was scared or his heart was pumping really fast or whatever, but he had, like, a whoa moment. <laughs> And it was just very cute. It was like a little kid realizing one, that's amazing I did that, but two, I could have wiped out and hurt myself. It was it was very cute. And so yeah, I was just you know what? I'm just gonna share this with the world. I don't care. Yeah. No, that's a nice story. I thought yeah. it was gonna be like some kid, some kid popped the wheel. He's like, take that, bitches. <laughs> like, oh, okay. It's no, like nothing like that. I uh I have sadly it was a good story. Nothing Crox and Crendor worthy at all. It was just like a nice story about a kid, and I was very happy for him. I am less happy about the fact that there's there, there at the the grocery store near me. There's like a dude who was posted up there, and he's not cool. He's <laughs> like a guy who has a motorcycle and he drives around in the parking lot and tries to like. Sh I don't know if he's filming. For like a uh, TikTok, he tries to show off. And uh, so if you're there, if you're there early enough in the morning where there's not enough cars and stuff, he's driving around. There's like people filming him, and he's doing like tricks and stuff. But in the parking lot, and I'm trying to park my car. <laughs> I'm like, come yeah. on, man. <laughs> See, I don't like, like that day. guy. Every, I mean, every time that I've been there for the last three weeks, he's been there. That's pretty weird. And so I he's usually clearly... go early in the morning. Yeah, he's clearly, like, waking up, and he's like, time for motorcycle day. <laughs> he goes over there, and he's just like, film me, everyone. Like, I hope that if he puts it on TikTok, someone will find it and give it to me and send it to me. <laughs> that would be funny if it just showed up on TikTok. I mean, it has to be on, like, a TikTok thing. I don't think there he'd be making it. Like, videos. I don't know what it's for other than that. But also, you know, there's a few people that used to do YouTube stuff with us back in the day who now their whole platform or whatever it is their business model is just taking photos next to beautiful cars and i'm not sure what they, it is they do for a job but every time i see them post online it's like them with a new car or a video of them driving with a squad of cars and i'm like is this a culture it reminds me of tokyo drift <laughs> like it's it's a bunch of people driving in their cars and drifting on like cliff faces overlooking the ocean. And I'm like, that's cool. What is it you do again? Like, who are you? Yeah, like some people are like, oh, you play video games. Like, at least we got to be entertaining while we're doing it. They're just standing by a car. I did. Re I did have this realization. I was having a conversation with someone. Oh, God. I don't know. Either the end of last year or the beginning of this year where I was like, you know, I realize a lot of the time I look at people online who are in our space and they aren't doing anything yet. They're traveling the world and, you know, they're doing all stuff. And I remember when they actually made content now they don't really do like, how do they live this way? And then I remembered the vast, vast majority. And this is a tip for everyone out there. Who's like, maybe I'll get into content creation. The vast majority of people who make TikToks or YouTube or stream or whatever, they started rich. Oh, their yeah. parents were rich. <laughs> And they just had so much free time and the ability to do anything they wanted that they decided to stream or, or make TikToks. 
The vast majority of people are rich. The other people who make it on these platforms are people who is broke as shit. <laughs> and, they, and they're like, well, I got nothing else going on. I'm not, I'm almost homeless. I guess I'll make videos. That's it. Most yep. people who have a normal ass job can't afford to just go for it when it comes to online video creation or TikTok or whatever. It's just impossible. Oh, yeah, 100%. Especially now. Now you're competing with so many people that are doing it for a living, which makes it even more difficult. Yeah, which is why people who have a ton of money to start, ha like in life in general, have a leg up. And it's absolutely crazy the amount of people. And I always have to remind myself, the amount of people I know who – I'm like, yeah, I remember making videos with them. I remember them doing this thing. And then I'll see them traveling the world. I'm like, well, where did that money? There's no way you made that off of YouTube. I've been doing this for so long. I know what YouTube pays. There's no way you're doing that. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's right. I met their family once. They have a mansion. They're, they're millionaires. <laughs> yeah. I get it. Okay. All right. It's All essentially right. they're just rich. And they're like, you know what I want to be? I want to be this thing. And then they just throw money at it. And they're like, I'm this thing now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. And and I cannot stress to you the amount of people that – I'm letting you know right now, just listener. All the people you love online, I'm telling you 75% were millionaires before they started. It's just a thing. Just letting you know. And I always forget myself, but I'm like, yeah, that's why they seem to be living this amazing lifestyle because they already had it. <laughs> Rather, Like I'm over here like, why am I not – like I'm busting my butt. Where's my millions? Turns out I would have to have had it to begin with. Tell you what, I'll even take half a million. <laughs> <laughs> I will settle for being a thousand heir. If yes. I can just, you can just hook me up. Yeah, I'll settle. <laughs> just, just come on. I'll, I'll take a picture in front of a car. I'll do it. Yeah, I will do it. I'll be like that girl who's like, <laughs> who like flicks things and says like, Mercedes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've seen that. <laughs> Toaster woman showed me that. She was like, I feel like you'd like this because it's the ASMR. And I was like, dude, this is like it's so weird, but it's like oddly satisfying of her just like going like, da -da 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 -da, just like Mercedes. <laughs> The best like, ones are the ones where people make fun of her. Where they're like, <laughs> she goes, Mercedes, and they tap a thing. They're like, Gio. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> Honestly, there's some pretty good TikTokers out there. And I'm not talking about like the mainstream verified ones. I'm talking about like the one guy I follow where he's just like, all right, here we go to Chicago, and we got a Chuck E. Cheese party in Chicago. And that's like his whole TikTok. I'm like, dude, this is the guy, this guy's a genius. I like I like those uh oh my god, they're like TikTok guys where it's like day in the life of a man who just moved to Japan. Today, I wanted to go get some ramen, but the ramen place I wanted to go get ramen from was closed when I got there. It was 10:30 <laughs> a.m. Apparently, they open at 6 in the morning and they go until they sell out. People get in line at 6 a.m. to eat ramen. And I'm like is that, am I learning that that's a thing? Like, that sounds crazy to me. And then I saw that because, you know, the algorithm, then I saw yeah. this girl who was like, hey, I'm in Japan with my uh, husband and my parents, and they don't like sushi, but I love sushi. And there's this place that opens up by the docks at 4 a.m., and everyone lines up to get sushi at 4. I'm like, that is a, that's crazy to me. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty crazy. It, I mean, like, that it's must the be best like the sushi top in Japan, ones. but you have to, yeah, like, but you have to line up. I'm like that. At 4 a.m., you're gonna wake up and be like, "Feed me all of your raw fish, please." I mean, there's people that line up for weirder shit. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I've seen people. I, I mean, line I live, up I live in the, LA. There's people line up uh, during Black Friday. They line up like a week in advance just to get a TV for like five hundred dollars off. Supreme sold crowbars <laughs> and people lined up to get a supreme crowbar so you know i mean yeah. like you're not wrong i'm yeah. just blown away by the time like i would line up to get a good thing of sushi like good sushi is great sushi you yeah. know what i mean mm. but 4 a.m to start my day eating raw fish i would be my all day i'd be with the weirdest burps like <laughs> <laughs> couldn't do it couldn't do it <laughs> yeah i don't know i like sushi too but yeah i don't uh, I'm the per I'm the person who would never line up for like anything. I just I just maybe I'm just not fun. Well, I mean I know I'm not fun, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just I can't like maybe if it was the greatest thing, 
They're like, this, like, you knew for sure this would be the greatest thing you'd ever eat. I'd be like, all right, maybe I'd do it for that. But it would have to be, like, pretty high up there. Sure. And I guess that's what it is, but I still wouldn't do it. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't have it in me mentally, spiritually to wake up at, well, actually, they had to, she had to leave before 4 a.m. to get there at 4 a.m. to then wait in line to get inside and then. They served her like an array of delicious food, which, all right, cool. But also, they're showing the food, and it's just literally a piece of sushi. Gorgeous looking sushi, but it's 4 a.m. sushi. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I, I just couldn't do it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, I mean, there's probably people that eat sushi for breakfast. In Japan, I believe that. But I'm Jesse Cox, born in the Midwest. I don't have that. <laughs> I don't have that in me. I'm that's like, true. you know, potatoes, maybe like some weird meat that's been fried. Yeah, all right, sure. <laughs> didn't they, did they do that no. in uh, like Finland and Norway and all those places? They eat fish for what breakfast. What do you mean? Oh, yeah, it's because they come from fish land. I come <laughs> from a place where it's, it's corn, potatoes, and cows, man. That's all, it's, you know, <laughs> what do you want from me? I know what I am. Hey, take that, fish land. <laughs> yeah, take that, fish land. <laughs> Yeah, I, when I when we get our breakfast, I usually get either like a a scramble thing of like it's got like eggs, potatoes, ham, and then like peppers, onions, and uh, mushrooms. Dude, and then some that cheese. That is exactly what I had today. <laughs> oh, really? We went out to go get breakfast before Godzilla. I got a ham scramble with mm -hmm. peppers and onions and mushrooms and potato, like a like a homestyle potato on the side. Yeah, it's like a it's like a that's, scramble skillet type thing. That's what I'm saying. That's what, that's what I got for breakfast. It was great. <laughs> See, uh, but instead of the potato on the side, I get the English muffin. They give you like the jelly. Uh, I like I'm that. A, I'm, I, I, you know, I'd rather have my potato. What I do is I get the potato on the I have the potato on the whole thing, and then I put hot sauce all over that stuff. Uh, yeah. I put, put some Tabasco, and then on the fries or whatever, the, the potatoes, I'll put ketchup on it too, and then I'll mix the potatoes up, and then I'll put it with – I got a whole system. I love a good scramble. Wait, so you're mixing the hot sauce and the ketchup together? Uh, on the potatoes only, yeah. So is that Cause like... Because I, like, I like ketchup on potatoes. Not a lot, obviously, but I like mm. you know I like the tang of the ketchup with the home-style potatoes. But then I like just hot sauce, and I put the it kick. on everything, because I will always do that. Yeah, you want the kick and the tang. Hell yeah. If they had a hot ketchup, I'd just use that, but they didn't, so... I wonder, is there a reason there's not more hot ketchups? I mean, there are. There are more than there ever been before, that's for sure. But well, it's like anything. There's more anything than ever before. Yeah, I don't know. But they they definitely have like a Tabasco ketchup. I mean, if you're talking about like Heinz, for example, they have a Tabasco one. They have a They got a one top that of is, ketchup? Yeah, they have a Sriracha ketchup now. Oh my, I didn't know this. Oh yeah, dude. Oh yeah. Try it. Honestly, truthfully, if you can get it. The Whataburger spicy ketchup is the best one. Here's the thing. When I had that spicy ketchup at Whataburger, I didn't think it was that spicy. I mean, I, I don't think it's supposed to be like mess you up spicy. It's just like a little like, you know, it's a little better than normal ketchup. Maybe maybe my taste buds have adapted. Maybe I taste it now and I'll be like, oh, yeah. Maybe. I don't. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't know what's going on with your taste buds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either. I mean, I, I don't had know what's it, going uh, on with those things. It was back during Pack South. That was like eight years ago or so. I don't know when that oh, was. Well, sure. Yeah, yeah I, it was a I, while ago. I was just thinking about the other day. I, I don't know who I was talking to. I, it might have been. It might have been Mathis when we were filming Chiluminati or something. But I was talking about that one vegan, not vegan, that one organic place that we went to. Organic place. The place that was that looked like a crack house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that place. The Sweet Yams. Yeah, I, ke I kept thinking, is Sweet Yams still there? Did they make I it through know. COVID? I hope so. Yeah, let's see. Sweet Yams. Uh, organic restaurant. Yeah. They're still going. 4.8 stars. Hell yes. It says. Yo, it looks less. It actually looks less like a drug den now. It they does. They built a porch and everything. <laughs> Yeah, the porch does make it a lot more friendly. <laughs> and they have a sign out front that has the hours. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Good on you know what? Good on them. They're making it. Yeah. They, oh yeah, look at that. The porch looks great. That's so much better than what we had. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> Dude, that place. Wait, 
that was easily the best Texas food. I mean, it, it was just like a, a couple that made food there, and they're like, this is what we have today. This is what we made. And it's nothing fancy or pretentious. It's just straight up real food. It was great. Yeah. No, that's the thing. It's like sometimes, in fact, the majority of the time, the best food is just the most simple food. Just done well. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that place is great. All right. I'm glad they made it. I'm glad they're doing well. Yeah. yeah. Go sweet yams. <laughs> go sweet yams but i was just talking about it because i was like man that place was great i remember going there and then credner and i went back the next year and they were like it's you guys thanks for the review and <laughs> yeah. i was like you know i miss places like that but i yeah. found one of that pizza place it's the exact same vibe yeah no that's true that's uh actually does pack does pack south still exist no there's no more pack south they they shut it down oh wow damn that was, uh, that, was a, that was probably the best packs honestly it was it, and I'm sure, for whatever reason, they weren't making money. But it feels like they should have been. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But here we are. Yeah, here we are, stuck with Pax, Ugh. other locations. Yeah, Pax too crowded <laughs> and Pax freezing. There's only two <laughs> options. Yeah, there's like the Oriole be in March. It's like negative ten with like a blizzard. Yeah, like come to Boston in March. Like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Or go to Seattle in the end of summer when it's hot and there's 80,000 people crammed in the smallest convention center they have. Cool. <laughs> now I just go to Adepticon, the Warhammer one. <laughs> Love my Warhammer convention. It's great. I like seeing more and more people get into Warhammer. It's really funny to watch. Uh, there's videos now online where people react to Warhammer videos which is really weird. And they're like, <laughs> oh, okay, so this guy, that was just like the aliens. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It's <laughs> funny to watch. Yeah. No, it's uh, – Warhammer keeps getting more and more popular. Well, by, uh, primarily 40K. But actually, there's, there's been more people getting into, like, the fantasy stuff and Sigmar and even, like, Old World because now they're doing, like, a – they're bringing back fantasy from, like, the 90s and early 2000s is this new thing. So they're, yeah, they're doing a lot. Think it's, I don't think it's people getting in it to like play it but they're getting in it because it's interesting yeah well there's some people getting in to play it there's a blend that's the fun part about it is you can do you play it uh, you you know get into the hobby however you want you can build stuff you can learn about the lore you can paint stuff you can actually play the game like me i'm a i'm a guy that plays the game i love the competitive tabletop thing even if the games <laughs> take like two hours i just but. like the idea of you being like <laughs> i play the game I'm a e game player. EA okay? Sports. I play the game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know it's in the game. Somebody's be like, Cred or it's in the game. I know. I'm making a joke. All right? It's a joke. It's not a very funny joke, Cred <laughs> I don't make funny jokes. <laughs> I just make jokes. And sometimes they land and sometimes they don't. That one's somewhere in the middle. I like just, I don't make funny jokes. <laughs> hey, listen. I never said I was making funny jokes. <laughs> Uh, either way, you know, it's going to be a great new year. Mm -hmm. Great new year. And speaking of great new things for the new year. Hello Fresh. That's right. Once again, we are proud to be sponsored by Hello Fresh for 2024. The best way to get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip all those trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. So if, unlike me, you actually had a resolution and it was to save money or eat better or to stress less, HelloFresh is here to help you make that happen. Maybe all three. And like we were saying, the key to maintaining those resolutions is to just get past how it's kind of boring sometimes to just stick with something and maintain something. Well, HelloFresh is making that super easy because boredom will not strike when you have so many different options. They have over 45 dinner options to choose from weekly and even more market add-on items to suit your lifestyle. Maybe you've resolved to sit down at the dinner table with your family. Well, HelloFresh can make it easy in our very fast-paced lives. You could get something in 15, 20 minutes with a quick and easy meal. If you're looking for calorie smart or protein smart, they have those as well. Plus breakfast, which is the most important meal of the day. And right now, they're giving all subscribers free breakfast for life. That means you'll enjoy a totally free breakfast item with every single HelloFresh delivery. 
Now that's worth waking up early for. So if you want to get in on the sweet chili pork and cabbage stir fry, which is one of my favorites, or maybe just some black bean tacos, that's also very good. Or if you're looking for something family friendly, they have a, a pork schnitzel. Everyone loves a good schnitzel. Big fan of that. They've got a lot of great foods that you can make. And again, like we said a million times, if you don't want to make it exactly the way they have it, if you want to take out something or add something of your own, you can do that because you're the one cooking it. So you know what's going in it. I'm a big fan of that. So right now, go to HelloFresh.com slash COXFREE and use code COXFREE for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash COXFREE, C-O-X-F-R-E-E, with code COXFREE. HelloFresh, it's America's number one meal kit. All right, let's go to chapter cover seven. This guy with Crandor. How's that traveling out there? Oh boy, traffic is actually pretty good. It's calmed down a lot, and uh, in certain places, it's like super snowing right now. It's like blizzards and bad weather, so even more reason for people to stay inside. So uh, we're finally done with the crazy travel stuff, even if it is still, you know, back to standard traffic. But even standard traffic can suck at times. So uh, back to you. You kept saying standard. And I know this has nothing to do with weather or, <laughs> right. or traffic, but I keep thinking of those Stanley Cups, those Stanley like yeah, mugs. The Stanley Cups. What is going on? Why are people stealing them now? What is happening? Dude, there it's like the Furby trains. Of them. Yeah, they're like, it's like Furbies or like Beanie Babies. They're like, now it's the Stanley Cup. And I, whenever I hear the Stanley Cup, I think of like the actual hockey Stanley right, Cup. Right, hockey. <laughs> yeah. And so I've seen, I've seen people at the gym with those cups. They're gigantic. Those things are huge. I, I just, I guess I don't understand what, I've seen photos of people online posting their like 15 Stanley Cups. I'm like, well, isn't the point of a reusable cup that you have one? And people are like, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 you have to have a different color for different times of the day for different <laughs> outfits. This, there's a video of this dude going into a Starbucks to steal a box of their Stanley Cups. And I'm like, what? And then the crowd, I've never... You know how usually if you watch a video online, it's like a wall, excuse me, it's like a Walmart or it's like a, uh, you know, a Target or whatever. Yeah. Someone steals something, everyone's just filming it. The yeah. Stanley Cups, the Starbucks crowd lost their mind. They ran this guy down the street and took back the cups. Because <laughs> they wanted those cups. They were all in line to get the new cups, which yeah. is so crazy to me. It's I insane. don't get it. I don't get it either. Because, like, it's just a big mug cup thing yeah that's yeah it. there's like these existed already they still exist you can get other brands that are like <laughs> pretty similar but like does somebody does somebody know does this thing have like some sort of magical power does it like keep your drinks like at a specific temperature and it's insane like i don't understand it reminds me of maybe like i don't know two or three years ago during covid everyone was talking about yeti brand cups oh yeah i remember that it's the exact same thing <laughs> i don't i don't understand what this is i don't know why people are losing their minds over it i get that it's like popular but i don't know that it's fight a guy in the street over a cup popular i have no i have <laughs> no clue man there's a there's literally a tiktok of somebody at target filming they put up the stanley cups and like everybody just charges it like give me my cup <laughs> they're just like gone in like a minute like it's insane I, I, yeah i don't understand it's uh and i guess they like put them up it said sold out in less than four minutes but it's like they put them up and literally everybody hold on, i'm just gonna i'm gonna send you this one hold on just so you can see okay i'll try to describe it um they put these stanley cups up and they're red maybe target red i'm not yeah. sure and the minute they put them up, a crowd of people have descended upon it. And there's a woman in the background saying, guys, there's a limit of two. There's a <laughs> yeah. limit of two. Again, why do you need more? Th Question. And I, and I, maybe this is the cynical part of me. Do you think what that is, is people buying them to then resell them online? Oh, there's definitely some people doing that. hundred percent. Because there's no way all these people showed up to just get a new... You can, I can go on Amazon right now, find a Stanley 40-ounce 
Flow State stainless steel vacuum insulated tumbler with lid straw for water, <laughs> iced tea, and coffee uh, for 45 bucks. Although 45 bucks sounds like a lot of money, but whatever. Yeah. So for 45 bucks, working at a 64 ounce for 60 online, 24 color options. I'm looking at them right now. Mm. You can get all sorts of designs. I don't know why people, I guess because it's like the special pink one. I, like, I don't know. It's got to be There's special pink- colors or something. I'm looking at the pink one right now. Yeah. Now, somebody in the comments even said a few years ago it was the Yeti. Now it's the Stanley Cup. <laughs> That's I, all right. I'm glad I'm not crazy because I <laughs> honestly, it felt like something. I'm like, something's off. Something's weird here. Yeah. Somebody said my grandpa had a Stanley he used to take to the factory in the 80s. Apparently, Stanley Cups have been around since like 1917 or something like that. Like very <laughs> early. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it must be like a good brand. There's like a durable brand. It's a, it's literally like a bear with a wings and a top hat or something. I don't know what that is. The Starbucks one apparently was a different color pink. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> and people are reselling. Yeah. As of January 5th, there's listings on eBay for $200 for these. Yeah, that checks out. <laughs> there's no, like, there's just no way that, that. It just, yeah, I don't, uh, okay. This is, I I went to the Stanley website, and it looks like they're also doing the one. They're just like, guys, the new quencher is here, the Arctic twist with, like, blue and white, and, like, here's the staff pick. They got, like, so many different ones now. This is, like, what's that cookie company? Is it, like, Crumble? And they, like, they do the new cookies every week, and they're like, you got to get your cookies this week, or you might not see them, and they've got new ones. Like, that's the thing now, is, like, they keep doing these, like, We'll do three flavors of the week, and you got to see it. It's Maybe it's like that, where they keep doing new things. It's like, if you don't get this one, you're going to miss out. That's so funny. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. There's yeah. seasonal colors. There's limited edition colors. Yeah, yeah. You can get a bright red one right now on the Stanley website. But also, did you know there's the core colors as well? You can get the charcoal or rose quartz. Meanwhile, on Amazon... The colors, they have other colors there that look like way cooler. Yeah. it's It's got to be, those ones got to be like resale. I mean, they're all still 50 bucks, even though on the website over here it's 45 So you're paying yeah. a $5 markup on Amazon, but like the colors are different. They got the, they got a blue and gold one that looks pretty cool. They got all sorts <laughs> of different ones. Somebody said, I've never seen so many Uggs and Crocs in one video. <laughs> dude i swear to god people used to make fun of me like oh you're wearing sweatpants all over dude i look like i'm high fashion now wearing like my athleisure and my sweatpants i look like i'm ready to go now there's people there's we got crocs uggs they got they look like they're wearing pajamas and i'm like dude i'm styling yeah i don't i don't get it there's so <laughs> many I, you know i'm not you know i'm not gonna yuck anyone's yum if you want to grab a Stanley, do it. But also, I definitely am going to judge if you get like five of them. I don't understand yeah. why you need why you would need five. The whole point is it's reusable. I don't. Yeah, you only. It doesn't you only make any one. sense to me. I don't get it either. It makes no sense. Unlike Crenslaw sweatpants at Crenslaw.com, which are a great deal. Very yeah, soft. Yeah, those Very aren't good. reusable. Don't reuse those. If you <laughs> yeah. wear, wear it once, throw it away. Buy yeah. another. Yeah, I'd probably have to buy ten. Minimum. Yeah. Minimum. Um, <laughs> And that's your uh, traffic report. <laughs> All right, let's go to weather. Ooh, weather. Let's see. Um, I'm going to type weather into this thing, and I'm going to do... I'm going to hold down enter, and we're going to land on one. This is like weather roulette. Here we go. We are on weather request for my hometown of, hometown of 8600 Silkeborg, Denmark, also known as Denmark's outdoor capital. Local eateries, Walk This Way, Jensen's, Bafhus, and Bones. What Danish people think a uh, all-American restaurant looks like. Hell yes. Okay. <laughs> Silkeberg. Okay. All right, here we go. Silkeberg, Denmark. For Silkeberg, we've got... Uh, bah, 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 bah. You're going to get your old Fahrenheit here. 17 degrees Fahrenheit, American units. Uh, feels like 17. Humidity 87%. Pressure 30.63 inches. Visibility 10 miles. 
pretty visible. Wind, 3 mile an hour, going southwest, dew point 14, UV index 0, 8.51 a.m. sunrise, 4.06 p.m. sunset, with a moon phase of waning crescent. Looking at the 10-day, we've got uh, sun and clouds with a hard freeze expected, 18 degrees. Watch out for that hard freeze. Uh, Tuesday, we got cloudy, 34. Wednesday, 31 with some a.m. fog. Thursday, 31 with fog. Friday, partly cloudy, 33. Saturday, 38 with some a.m. showers. And Sunday, 34, partly cloudy. So, pretty cold and pretty cloudy. I just want to say to everyone in Silkeborg, Denmark, <laughs> uh, I know that when the commenter said, Bones is what people think Americans eat here in Denmark. Right. I need you to know, it isn't what you think we eat. It is exactly what we eat. <laughs> I am looking at the photos of this. <laughs> it looks exactly like American food. Hold the on, steak and potato looks this. American as hell. The burgers look American as hell. The chicken looks like it's grilled. Uh, the salads look American. <laughs> the ribs look. Uh, this is the most American European food I've ever seen. Wow! It looks. It looks American as hell. It does. It really does. It doesn't look. Oh you know, God. a lot of time we see like, oh yeah, that's clearly the fake American thing, and it's kind of yeah. a goof. No, this is. It isn't over the top. They aren't putting like crazy stuff on hamburgers. It just looks like even the chicken looks American as hell. Yeah. Wow, yeah, and it I'm looks pretty good. convinced an actual American runs this restaurant. It's got to be some American just move there. Because the yeah. steak, they got the steak and potatoes, steak and french fries. The sa I'm looking at this chicken salad. That is the most American chicken salad I've ever seen <laughs> in my entire life. <laughs> Do they have a pizza boat? You see? Did you see a pizza boat? I'm looking at that pizza boat. I wish I had that pizza boat. That looks crazy. Yeah, I'm just looking at all these different foods, and I'm like, yeah, no, that's – they got the Coke. The Coke <laughs> is the accurate size for an American Coke. I think it looks yep. huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, even the ice cream that has, like, a little cup with, with M&Ms on it, that's American <laughs> as hell. This place, I know – I know if, if – I will say this. If you're in Denmark and you go here, that's about as American experience as you can have. This is – and it looks, like, good. Like, it's yeah. Like, it's like they've done American food, but – well, like in both, it isn't taste like one of those places beer. we see where it says American, and then it's like a burger covered with eight eight pounds of cheese or something like that. And you're like, what the, <laughs> yeah. who would eat this? <laughs> yeah, that's the weather. <laughs> All right, let's go to sports. Sports, sports. Uh, sports. What a day of sports! It is a big football day. It was the final day of the regular season. And great news for both of us, the Packers and the Steelers have made the playoffs. The Steelers are doing great this uh, in their division, killing it, killing yep. it. Yeah. Uh, currently, the Bills and Dolphins are tied at seven. Winner of that gets the two seed. Loser of that, I believe, falls to like the six seed. The Bengals beat the Browns. Lions beat the Vikings. Titans beat the Jaguars, who have been eliminated. The Jets beat the Patriots. Saints beat the Falcons. Panthers lost to the Buccaneers. Packers beat the Bears. Raiders beat the Broncos. Giants beat the Eagles. Seahawks beat the Cardinals. Chiefs beat the Chargers. Rams beat the 49ers. And the Cowboys beat the Commanders. And then the other night, the Steelers beat the Ravens. And the Texans beat the Colts. So now, the playoff picture. If you take a look at it, we got our playoff games all set for the NFL We've got the uh, Cowboys, Packers, Lions, Rams, and Buccaneers, Eagles. And then it looks like we've got, uh, I think, well, the AFC depends on who wins tonight. But uh, I believe the Texans and Browns are going to play. So that's already one of the games. And then the 49ers and Ravens have the bye weeks. So playoff time. Playoffs. Playoffs. Sir. Uh, and then over in the NBA, we've got the... Bring Celtics up top and first with the Bucks and the 76ers right behind them. And then in the West, you got the Timberwolves at top with the Thunder and the Nuggets right behind them. And then over in hockey, we've got the Bruins up top with the Panthers behind them. The Rangers atop their division, the Jets and the Avalanche battle it out in the Central. And in Pacific, you got the Vancouver Canucks ahead of the Vancouver or the Vegas Golden Knights, not the Vancouver Golden Knights. 
and that's sports. It's time for our fact of the year. Well, this this fact's going to set you up for the entire year. <laughs> <laughs> I feel uh, like it was a new year, so we should do a fact of the year to start well, us off. I did find 10 fun New Year's facts and traditions. I'll take it. This is this is what I'm here for. All right, perfect. The first New Year's celebration dates back 4,000 years. Julius Caesar, the emperor of Rome, was the first to declare January 1st a national holiday. He named the month after Janus, the Roman god of doors and gates. Janus had two faces, one looking forward and one looking back. Caesar felt that a month named after this god would be fitting. Oh, huh. that's true. A lot of the a lot of the uh, calendar months that we have, uh, the Romans threw in there or stole from other people. That's true. Yeah, that checks out. Yeah. Uh, Forty five percent of Americans make New Year's resolutions. That sounds right. Yep. I mean, that's what we're talking about. Top resolutions are to lose weight, get organized, spend less, and save more. Stay fit and healthy. Quit smoking. While nearly half of all Americans make resolutions, 25% give up on their resolutions by the second week of January. That's actually less than I thought. Uh, I, uh, that's, I mean, but that's just second week of January. Like, that's true, yeah. They you are give including another week three. <laughs> week, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We got be sure to eat leafy greens on New Year's. What? Traditions say that more leafy greens a person eats, the more prosperity he or she will experience. Well, yeah, you're eating healthy things. I also heard that uh, eating 12 grapes is a thing. What? I don't know if it's cultural. It's not an American thing. But, uh, yeah, I was told that eating 12 grapes. And I was like, well, what if I just drank a whole glass of grape juice? Is that, that's got to be more. It has to be more than 12 grapes, right? That's too many grapes. Yeah, but, you know, you can double down, right? 12 grapes, one for each month. If I have a whole glass, that's got to be like 40 grapes. Yeah, but then you're taking like two. That's too many grapes because then you're taking no, years no, and years of grapes. Good luck. Yeah, exactly. That's too much grape. I'm ahead of the curve. And then if I keep <laughs> going, I will have a built up reservoir of extra bonus <laughs> month luck. <laughs> all right. Maybe you're onto something. Yeah. What if uh, I get a whole bag <laughs> of grapes, take them home, eat them all New Year's Day, call it a life? Am I in? Uh, That's a whole I, bag. I don't even know what the, like, who does this? <laughs> I'm just like, uh, I want to say grapes? Spain eating 12 grapes. I originally would have assumed Spain, but then I saw in an episode of Modern Family that Gloria eats them. It's a Spanish tradition. All right. Consists of uh, eating okay. a grape for each of the 12 uh, clock bell strikes at midnight on the 31st of December. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, that makes sense. That's like a, yeah, that's 12 a fun grapes. thing. Yeah, the 12 grapes of New of Year. Luck. It literally says the 12 grapes of luck. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Well, there you go. And there's yeah, your random the facts you know. of the year. <laughs> All right. What is our big news story of the day? Big news story of the day. Day, day, day. 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 I also realized that day. I had like. 10 fun New Year's facts and traditions. Some of these other ones just suck, so I just skipped them. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, so we've got, oh boy. We've got two stories. I feel like one of these deserve to be their own stories. So I feel like we save one for this week and the next for next week. All right, well then you surprise me. I don't want to be spoiled. Okay. You choose. Let's go. <laughs> uh, Give me a number, one or two. Two. Florida man sues Dunkin' Donuts over injuries following toilet explosion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not where I thought we were going to go, but that's where we ended up. <laughs> yep. Uh, an employee told the man they were aware of the problem with the toilet since there had been previous incidents. What? <laughs> what is, there is so much we don't know about this story going in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a customer has filed a negligence lawsuit against Duncan, claiming he was injured by an exploding toilet at one of the coffee chain's locations in Central Florida. Paul Kurak is seeking more than 100000 in lawsuits filed Wednesday in the state of Coeur d'Alene, claiming he suffered severe and long-term injuries following the explosion of a toilet in the men's room. For only 100000 like millions, I thought. You're getting well, long-term kind of injuries? 
What kind of explosion? Yeah. yeah. Is it like a poo-poo explosion? What's the vibe here? <laughs> Let's see. After the explosion, it left him covered in feces, urine, and debris. He walked out of the <laughs> men's room seeking help that from workers. That's so bad. <laughs> that is, oh that is that's, that's terrible. That is pretty bad. An employee told him they were aware of the problem with the toilet since there had been previous incidents. Were there previous explosions? That's what I'm saying. Something about, we're missing something about this story. Yeah. When contacted Thursday by email for more details on his injuries, his attorney said he was tied up and couldn't answer the questions the following day. Canton, Massachusetts based company did not immediately respond. The lawsuit says he suffered bodily injury and required mental health care and counseling. Well, he says he suffered long term severe injuries. But then he's not naming the injuries. Sounds like he just got shit on, literally. Right? Yeah, you know what? I still pay the man. You know, I <laughs> yeah, don't he can still lie. He can lie 100%. and make it up all he wants. Yeah, like go ahead. Go <laughs> ahead and lie a little bit. I don't give a shit. Like that's that's awful. Like this guy, you know what? You're fine. You're fine by me, <laughs> yeah. mister. You go to use the bathroom and you get covered in feces, urine, and debris, and then walk out like <laughs> like you're a swamp monster, and everyone's like, oh god. We got pee, we got poo, we got debris. Yeah, what's what is, debris? What is happening in, multiple times? So it's already been a problem before, <laughs> which means before this, people have exploded the bathroom. So the question becomes, <laughs> why is the bathroom exploding? <laughs> well, like, that's is, a huge question no one is answering. Why is the bathroom exploding? That I, is <laughs> the, the first question of the new year. It There's should be, be the question this, we right? ask all the time. <laughs> Why is the bathroom? Is anyone going to answer that? That seems <laughs> like a, it should be something we all look into. Why? Just the fact that you see a guy walk out just covered in shit like this. And he's just like, the, the employees are like, God, not again. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah, geez. that's crazy. <laughs> it's the fourth one this week. <laughs> doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Why? Wh like, they, they said they warned him. <laughs> yeah, that it exp so they knew it. Exp so why didn't just put a do not uh, out of order sign? Get the hose again. <laughs> 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 like uh, I thought when it exploded, and he said it was serious. Like the actual toilet, like exploded. Like the the pieces of the porcelain, no, this is like, like an shattered. Eruption. <laughs> yeah, this is like it erupted. <laughs> This is yeah. like in a 90s comedy movie where, like, yeah. the kids stick M80s down the toilet or something. Like, this this is insane. Yeah. Yeah. There's, <laughs> the fact that this story didn't start with why the toilets keep exploding is beyond me. That Like, that should be the number one investigative journalism thing you're doing is figuring out why that's happening. Yeah. It's got to be, like, what happened to the other people? Were they just like, eh, you know, I understand. Toilet's going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> and they, they I thought maybe it. I was the problem. <laughs> like, I, maybe I was the one who did it. They're just like, you know what, sir? We'll give you a free donut. <laughs> it's like, wow, okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's... there's got to be more that happens to the story down the line, right? I, honestly, you're the one with the article. I'm assuming no. I'm assuming we will never have an answer because <laughs> that is how these stories on the internet work. People read the headline, think they got enough information and move on. And no one actually reads the article because this article explains nothing. <laughs> That's true. I think out of all the stories we've covered over like the decade we've been doing this, there's been like two or three that we could like follow up on. Most of the time it's just like, yeah, so uh, monkeys are now banned at this <laughs> restaurant. And you're like, what? They were allowed at the restaurant. Like, there's so much we don't know. And there's like, oh, well, uh, go call them yourself. <laughs> That's your job, news guy. There's a little, like, I'm trying to think of the stories we've had where we went back. There's like Hank the Tank, obviously. We've had multiple Hank reports. We had yep. uh, the, the treasure guy. Remember that? The, yes. <laughs> the yep. treasure. And then we had uh, the, what's it called? Was Tito Watts a follow-up story? Tito Watts was, but then we found out both of those Tito Watts stories were fake, apparently. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Which, uh, you know what? I choose to believe they're real. I don't care. And then that house. The house that got, like, a Netflix show. Yes, yes, yes. The Watcher. Yeah, the yeah. Watcher, yeah. Those are it. Those that's are the like only ones. All, yeah. <laughs> that's all of them. Out of every 400 and something news stories. I would love to say that all of those had satisfying answers. They just don't. 
<laughs> if anything, it's a lesson for life that life isn't always satisfying, I guess. Yeah, sometimes life just explodes like a toilet. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Yeah. Oh. That's your big news story of the day. All right. That's it for us. Thanks so much for listening and watching. I'm enjoying this podcast. Grandor, hit him with the socials. We've got socials, youtube.com slash Cox and Crendor podcast, all one word. You can find all the podcasts over there. I got to make a new playlist for the 2024 episodes Yo. now. Whoa. And then uh, all over over on the old youtube.com slash Cox and Crendor, we got all the animations. Uh, you can also go to Spotify, I, I cloud or iTunes, SoundCloud, yep. uh, to do, whatever. Yep. Just type it in. Uh, <laughs> also, you can find us on our own things. Go to Krensloth.com, buy my sweatpants and other merch. Uh, go to YouTube.com, Jesse Cox, YouTube.com, Krendor, Patreon, Jesse Cox, Hell Patreon, yeah. Krendor, Twitter.com, Jesse Cox, Twitter.com, Krendor, uh, Twitch TV, Jesse Cox, Twitch TV, Krendor, Instagram, Notorious Cox, Instagram, Krendor was taken, TikTok, Jesse Cox, TikTok, TikTok, Krendor, uh, TikTok, TikTok, uh, TikTok, uh, TikTok, uh, TikTok. Uh. Okay, I think I think you died, but we're just going to move on and end the episode anyway. Take that. Uh, that's it. Thanks so much. And as always, woo, to be continued.